Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another historic game video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red collected conjuring deck titled Crash City as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The deck is built around Collected Conjuring, a 4-mana sorcery from the latest anthology expansion, saying exile the top 6 cards of your library and you may cast up to 2 sorcery spells with converted mana cost 3 or less from among them without paying their mana cost. So this is an homage to Collected Company, although it only hits sorceries as opposed to creatures. So our deck is fully built with sorceries in mind and the only non-sorcery card besides Collected Conjuring, which of course can't hit additional copies of Collected Conjuring are the four copies of Arc Light Phoenix, the 3-2 Phoenix with Flying and Haste, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've cast three or more instant and sorcery spells this turn, we can return it from our graveyard to the battlefield so it can attack right away. And our deck has plenty of discard outlets to discard Arc Light Phoenix, and then casting a single Collected Conjuring will be enough to get back Arc Light Phoenix, assuming we find two spells to cast with our Conjuring, as we'll cast three spells total. So that's a very synergy card in the deck as well. And then what's our author win condition beside Arclight Phoenix? That's where Invade the City comes in handy, a 3 mana sorcery from War of the Spark saying a mass X, where X is the number of instant and sorcery cards in our graveyard, and a mass means we put X plus one plus one counters on an army we control, and if we don't control one, we get to make a 0-0 black zombie army creature token first, and then put all those plus one plus one counters on it. So if we amass multiple times, casting multiple copies of Invade the City, we will keep on making a bigger and bigger zombie, and that's where the other half of the deck's name comes in handy. Crash through a one mana sorcery, saying creatures we control gain trample until end of turn. So that's a neat way for us to give trample to our giant zombie token to make sure we can hit the opponent and kill them in maybe just one attack. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Besides Crash Through, which also draws a card, we have the full set of Pillar of Flame as our one-mana removal spell of choice, dealing two damage to any target, also potentially exiling any creature dealt damage by it. And then the full set of Warlord's Fury as another cantrip that also gives our creatures first strike until end of turn. Then at 2 mana we've got a few ways to discard our Arc Light Phoenix and put additional sorceries in the graveyard for Invade the City with the full set of Charter Cores. We get to draw 2 and then discard a card unless we've attacked this turn, as well as Cathartic Reunion as an additional cost we have to discard 2 cards to draw 3. And then See the Truth is very synergistic with our Collected Conjuring as well. A 2 mana sorcery saying look at the top 3 cards of your library, put one of those into your hand, the rest goes on the bottom. But if the spell was cast from anywhere other than your hand, put each of those cards into your hand instead. So if we find See the Truth with our Collected Conjuring, we can draw 3 cards with it. And then we also have 2 copies of a Royal Eruption as another cheap removal spell dealing 3 damage to any target. Can also kick it for 5 additional mana to deal 5 damage instead. And then at 3 mana, besides our full set of Invade the City, we also have 2 copies of Beacon Bolt, dealing damage to target creature equal to the total number of instant and sorcery cards we own in exile and in our graveyard. And it also has Jumpstart, so we can cast it out of our graveyard by discarding a card from our hand and then exiling it afterwards. And then topping off our curve, of course, are 4 copies of Arclight Phoenix and 4 copies of Collected Conjuring. And then going over the mana base, we've got access to a ton of dual lands in the Izzet Colors. So we've got the full set of Steam Vents, as well as Spire Bluff Canal, which is untapped as long as it's one of our first 3 lands. We've got the Blue-Red Pathway, then 4 basic mountains, 2 basic islands, and then 2 copies of Sulphur Falls, with essentially 10 basic land types to go with it. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw, facing our Yurion deck. So, yeah, this hand seems fine. Probably not a great matchup for Pillar of Flame, so I can discard it to Charter Course. But having Conjuring, definitely pretty important. Kick things off with a Warlord's Fury. Can also decide to see the truth on two. Their opponent Sultai colored. This is probably a growth spiral. So do I want to see the truth or chart a course? Probably just chart a course. That way I put more sorcery in the graveyard for invade the city, which I could already cast next turn. The advantage of playing invade the city on three is that if we hit additional copies of invade the city with conjuring, it will grow the zombie so we can hit for more. 
So currently already three sorceries in the graveyard. Opponent had an omen of the sea instead. Also a good synergy with Yurion. So not sure if this is a Soltai ultimatum deck, emergent ultimatum that is. Now that are playing white as well. Yeah, I don't mind invading the city here. Make a 3-3. Next turn could get even larger. Archon of Sun's Grace is a creature I wouldn't mind killing with Beacon Bolt if we find it. So for now, we'll Conjuring. And we hit potentially double Royal Eruption. Or I could make my Zombie Token larger with another Invade the City. And then I get to either Charter Course or Crash Through. I guess Charter Course makes more sense then. Hmm, Archon of Sun's Grace is pretty scary to keep in play. So I'm tempted to just kill it here. Even though it's not the most exciting play here. At least we're putting more sorceries in the graveyard, so a future Invade the City will be even better. Ravenous Chupacabra, Blast from the Past, kills our zombie, so glad I didn't make a larger one. Also has good synergy with Yurion. Alrighty, so... Probably just Conjuring again. Question is whether to Fury first or after. Probably want to do it first in case of another Invade the City. Alright, Arclight Phoenix, perfect. So if we just want to get back Phoenix, I could Reunion plus see the Truth this turn. There's just a one Phoenix, but we could maybe find another one with see the Truth, and then Conjuring is another way to get it back, so I think I like that more. So we'll do this first, and probably take Invade. And then Cathartic Reunion discards Phoenix and Steam Vents. All right, get back arc lights, hit for three. Got double conjuring, invade the city in hand, so our hand's pretty stacked, even have a crash through to give our zombie token trample if needed. All right, they had a Yurion in hand, which will flicker Chupacabra, killing Arclight Phoenix, as well as drawing more with Omen. So Yurion's going to be a pretty big roadblock, just for Phoenix to attack. And we still have a Yurion waiting in the companion zone, so... Our opponent has access to more removal with Chupacabra. But Pillar of Flame is an easy way to get rid of it. So this turn... Could also Conjuring to get back Phoenix and then Pillar Flame to finish off the Yurion that's in play, which I don't mind. So we've got a couple options. If that's the case, we want to Pillar second main phase. We hit another Pillar and Beacon Bolt. I guess we'll just Beacon Bolt and Cathartic then. Beacon Bolt to Yurion. And then Cathartic for more card draw, discarding Crash, See the Truth, and then Pillar the Chupacabra. Sounds okay. And then it's probably fine to play out an extra lane, so I can potentially invade the city and Conjuring in the same turn. Scarab God, alright. Scarab God is scary, although I could potentially exile it with Pillar of Flame Beacon Bolt if I Pillar first. Although there's a chance I could kill my opponent if we get lucky with Conjuring and Charter Course if we hit two more copies of Arclight Phoenix. 
So definitely an interesting turn ahead of us. I could invade the city and make a giant zombie, which could also just run away with the game. Although letting Scarab God untap is a scary proposition. At least the Chupacabra's exiled so they won't be able to get that one back. So if I need 4 mana between Pillar and Beacon Bolt, that still leaves me enough to invade the city, so maybe that's just a play here. So Beacon Bolt discarding... I guess we need to Pillar first to make sure Scarab God gets exiled. And then I think I discard Charter Course just so I can cast Invade the City here. Hit for three. And that's a 17-17 zombie. Still have a Conjuring in hand. Let's hope that's enough. Oath of Kaya takes out Arclight Phoenix. And how are they gonna deal with my zombie? A Knight of Autumn as a chum blocker. Alright, let's see if we can find a removal spell for it. Even a crash through will be enough. And there's Invade the City and Crash Through. So that's gonna be one big zombie. 37 37, Arclight Phoenix comes back. And that's game. And yeah, that's why the deck is titled Crash City, because of that pretty sweet two-card combo. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got plenty of spot removal, but if it's not a matchup for it, we can always discard them to Charter Course. Lenor Elves I definitely want to take out here. So, could this be some sort of elf tribal deck? Looks like a mono green stompy deck instead with a turn 2 troll. So yeah, let's chart a course and then... Don't know if Pillar of Flame is going to be all that amazing anymore. Now that we dealt with elf, the opponent's creatures are going to be quite a bit larger. So I definitely want to hang on to Beacon Bolt. And then by discarding a sorcery we're also powering up Beacon Bolt. So it's between a Crash Through and a Pillar of Flame. I guess I'll hang on to Pillar for now. And then next turn, most likely going to Beacon Bolt something. As we see a Garrick's Harbinger. Seems like a better target, although Royal Eruption could also work. So given that I would like to Conjuring next turn, I guess going Crash Through plus Eruption could be better at giving me an extra land by next turn. So let's do that. And there we go. And then next turn I can Conjuring. Or we can potentially Beacon Bolt if we really have to. No copies of Arclight Phoenix in the graveyard, sadly. Yeah, I think we're still conjuring. Could also hit another Beacon Bolt off of it. Alright, see the truth. It's gonna be a draw three, so that's always gonna be the pick. And then invade the city. I guess I messed up the sequencing. Should have clicked invade the city first to make it one larger. I got too excited to draw three. Alright, so 6-6, six, six. pretty large here. Should have been a 7-7. Seven, seven. But for most intents and purposes, it's going to be playing defense. And then next turn we could make it even larger if we want. Mono green might struggle to deal with it. Beacon Bolt can answer the opponent's creatures, or we can Conjuring again. A Lovestruck Beast just as a 5-5. Five, five. And a Arclight Phoenix a draw. Opponent might be setting up something like a Galta or a Great Henge, which could be a reason to still kill the Lost Rock Beast here. Probably too soon for me to start attacking with my zombie, even if we invade again. So the options are really Beacon Bolt, Lost Rock Beast, or 
collected Conjuring in the hopes of finding a discard outlet for Phoenix. Yeah, let's go digging. Alright, we found another Invade the City anyway, as well as a discard outlet, so that's perfect. So we'll click on Invade the City first this time, and then Cathartic. Discard Phoenix, and probably still a land. And then we will be getting back Arclight Phoenix. And what else do we do here? Probably just play a tap land. Could also Fury and then attack, but I'm afraid of taking Lethal on the way back. So we'll wait until next turn to make that play. And then Arclight Phoenix is probably safe to attack. Even though keeping it on defense is defensible. So now if we can find a crash through and combine it with Invade the City, we can just kill the opponent next turn, but opponent already packs it in. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Got some early removal, some discard outlets, and of course our collected conjuring. So turn two, we have a few options. Probably gonna lead with chart, of course. Opponent on some sort of life gain deck. Could also reunion to dig a little bit deeper to make sure I hit my land drops and then discard like a Seed of Truth and chart, of course, keep pillar just in case. The next one I could already invade the city just to get the zombie out there for future copies of Invade the City. But if I don't hit my land drop, I might take a different approach to make sure I can Conjuring on 4. Soul Warden into Beloved Princess. Soul Warden's something I don't mind taking out. So I could Cathartic again. And then what do I discard? Perhaps Fury Seed of Truth. And then I can Pillar without having to take two. Beacon Bolt also going to be nice for potential creatures like a Janice Pride Mate, which can get out of Royal Eruption or Pillar of Flame range. But I'm just going to draw with Dawn of Hope and Authority of the Consuls. All right. Can be effective against our Arclight Phoenix, but... For now, I think we're just Conjuring. And we hit Cathartic, and... Don't really care about the Princess too much, so I guess I would rather draw. So... Discarding... Seed of Truth, and... Maybe another Beacon Bolts since we'll still have access to it from the graveyard. All right. Plenty of copies of Invade the City, so can maybe start casting those. As we see Basri putting a counter on Bluff Princess, that's fine. My sand will protect you. Pillar of Flame can still deal with it. And then I can either Conjuring or Invade the City. Might want to get a creature in play. Since there's no Arclight Phoenix to get back with Conjuring at the moment. Got a 13-13, although could potentially present lethal by casting another Invade the City next turn. A Wrath of God gonna deal with our zombie, so our opponent's slightly more controlling life gain deck from the looks of it. In your I could char a course and then invade again. Discard Arclight Phoenix. So now 
Our client Phoenix will still come into play tapped. I think invade might still be the play. Just to give us a chance of killing them next turn. Gotta watch out for Basri's ultimate, although we can keep him in check with Pillar if needed. My sand will protect you. And another Wrath of God. Alright, so probably have to Pillar of Flame Basri here. Not that the ultimate is super threatening, but it could be annoying. Especially if our opponent gets a bunch of blockers for Invade the City tokens. So we've got six mana total, which means I could Conjuring Pillar still have one mana left, which I guess isn't super useful. So let's Conjuring first and see what we hit. Crash and Reunion. Crash can discard Fury and probably just a land. A Royal Eruption could also go after Basri. Although we can almost play it kicked, so... Yeah, we'll uh, move to combat. Our client's tapped. And then we'll pillar Basri here. Alright. Hopefully this last Invade the City sticks around. Could also cast a kicked Royal Eruption to take out the opponent's Planeswalker. As we see, a Jani, adversary of Tyrants. I understand you be strong. It's just gonna plus. I will Another go Conjuring. So, got a couple options. Basri isn't super threatening. Neither is a Jani, really. Opponent doesn't have any creatures to get back since we exiled both. But another Wrath of Gods can make these Planeswalkers a lot more threatening. I think I still want to invade the city just to get more threats in play. And then I could still chart a course and play an unkicked Royal Eruption after attacking with Phoenix to finish off one of them. Probably go after a Jani. So step one, in case we get back another Arclight Phoenix, I guess is to chart a course. Discard Phoenix. And then a Royal Eruption unkicked. Go after a Jani. And invade the city. Get back Arc Lights. And finish off a Jani. Alright, hopefully they're out of Wrath of Gods. And yeah, opponent explodes. They could have made a chum blocking token here with Dawn of Hope, but they were in pretty rough shape, especially if we hit one of our trample tricks with our collected conjuring. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and yeah, this hand seems fine. Got an early Warlord's Fury, turn two. My chart, of course. And we're setting up a nice Invade the City. Beacon Bolt also going to be a nice answer tonight. Turn to Fenlurker. Sadly, this exiles, so it doesn't count for Invade the City, although it does count for Beacon Bolt. I think Cathartic Reunion might go here, since I don't have anything specific I want to discard. Shard, of course. And what to get rid of here? Could get rid of a land, which I don't mind. And then next turn we can Beacon Bolt, maybe take out Knight of the Ebon Legion. So next turn we could cast two two drops. Although if we can wait until turn five to go Charter Course Reunion plus a one mana cantrip, we might be able to get back 
an Arc Line Phoenix, although Nine of Tweed were conjuring it's probably the play. Alternatively, I could Fury and then Jumpstart Beacon Bolt or Jumpstart Beacon Bolt discarding a sorcery here so it can deal four damage to Shepard. Although, let's double check. I guess Beacon Bolt doesn't count itself. So, I would have to cast a Warlord's Fury and discard another sorcery. So, we have four in the graveyard. Or, I guess, never mind. Reunion also is counted by the Beacon Bolt. So, we have three between Exile and Graveyard. So, yeah, either casting Fury or discarding a sorcery would do it. And I do think I want to take out Shepard. And then wait another turn on Conjuring. Downside is my opponent could find a discard spell for Conjuring. So... I think I'm just gonna Fury here, see what we draw. And then we'll jumpstart Beacon Bolts. And then I'll probably just discard a land now. And then finish off the Demon. Yeah, key difference between Invade the City and Beacon Bolt is that Beacon Bolt also counts the sorceries in exile. Another Knight. And a Phyrexian Arena. Alright. Time for Conjuring. And we found Pillar of Flame, which can deal with Knight of the Evan Legion. And then between Chartercourse and Cathartic. Probably go with Chartercourse since there's a chance I can draw into an Arc Light Phoenix and discard it. So it did not hit Arc Light Phoenix. What do I get rid of? Maybe go with Cathartic. And then. Could cast a Fury now since next turn we have Conjuring which should ensure that we get back any copies of Arclight Phoenix we potentially draw into. Grey Merchants drains us for six. Might have to invade the city just to get a board presence going here before our opponent casts a second Grey Merchant. It is going to be quite large already. Still haven't found any copies of Arclight Phoenix, which if I draw into it, I can easily discard as well. So I think we start things off with another Conjuring. And that's a pretty disappointing one, just two cantrips. And still no Phoenix. Alright, so opponent can double pump Fenlurker and we would be taking five. So my only hope is chart of course into Arclight Phoenix here. Alright, there it is. So at least we get one Phoenix back, so we're not dead on board. So can't afford to attack. Although we're dead to another Grey Merchant. So I have to block Fenlurker. At least we'll get our Phoenix back. Ayara will also slowly drain us to death. So we gotta make a pretty big move. I can see the truth in the hopes of finding another Collected Conjuring or Cathartic. And then I can still invade the city, cast another cantrip, get Phoenix back. Keeping a crash through could also be key to give her zombie trample. I guess we'll start with a Sea of Truth here. Find Beacon Bolt, nice answer for Ayara. So I guess we'll do that. And then just cycle a crash through to get Arclight Phoenix back to chum block with. And then I'm probably okay playing another land. And then next one we'll finally have to play Invade the City before they drop another Grey Merchant. Bolas the Citadel into a Yara. 
is gonna get the job done. So sadly we couldn't apply enough pressure here, didn't find Arclight Phoenix early enough and couldn't find a good window for Invade the City. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Zerda, the Dawn Waker, so maybe some sort of combo deck. Could also be cycling. Uh, my hand's not particularly exciting, but we do have early interaction, some cantrips, so... Could still work out if we draw the right sorceries afterwards. And then for now I'm fine cycling Fury, keep Crash Through in hand for later. Alright, Phoenix is nice if we find a Charter Course or Cathartic Reunion. So let's see what our opponent's up to. Padded pools, so it does point towards maybe a combo deck. And there's Cathartic Reunion, so that's a nice pickup. Discard Phoenix Pillar. Opponent might be playing a New Perspectives cycling combo deck. Although I guess New Perspectives might not have uh, the requirement for Zerda, so never mind. It's gonna be a Cold Steel Heart for now. So, doesn't look like my burn spells are going to be particularly useful. So I can chart, of course, discarding my Pillar of Flame. Okay, maybe crash first in case I draw into another Phoenix. And definitely have some lands we can discard as well. Alright, we'll get rid of uh, Spire Bluff. Yeah, our hand hasn't really developed so far. No Collected Conjuring, no additional card draw effects. So we might be in a bit of trouble. Opponent cycles Archfiend of Ifnir. Possible that they have a bit of a reanimation angle. Another pillar. Let's hope this crash through delivers. So far it did not. Alright, there's a Conjuring at least. Yeah, we'll hang on to our burn spells. Although I guess we can get back Phoenix if we just Pillar of Flame or Eruption. Pillar of Flame probably the best use of my mana. And hit for three. Next turn Conjuring can get back Phoenix if it dies, hopefully finds an Invade the City or a Seed of Truth for more card draw. And then we hang on to our bigger burn spells in case we need to kill an Archfiend at some point. So 6 mana for a Nickel Bolas. It's gonna plus, can get rid of a land. Let your weak minds crumble. So we can Definitely take out Nicol Bolas, probably going to go Pillar, plus an attack, and then Conjuring. Want to do everything main phase in case we get another Phoenix in the graveyard somehow. And cast Pillar before Conjuring in case of Invade the City. Alright, see the truth. Going to be one pick. And then... I guess we'll just draw one. So four mana draw four here, essentially. Picks up another Arclight Phoenix and invade the city for next turn. Ball us down. So next turn I could go Cathartic, discarding Phoenix, Royal Eruption, invade the city, and Fury as well. Probably Fury and then invade the city, which will get back a second Phoenix and make a giant zombie army token. Scarab God shows up, alright. It's not the first time we've seen that today. So that can also reanimate the Archfiend of Ifnir. Yeah, let's get another Phoenix out there. And then maybe discard Sea the Truth. Although this could dig for another Conjuring. A Royal Eruption could be a nice way to finish off our opponent or take out Scarab God. Yeah, still discard Seed of Truth, I think. Alright, Beacon Bolts can also temporarily deal with the Scarab God. So I have to decide between killing Scarab God or making an army token here. It is close, because army could just kill the opponent next turn with Crash Through especially. 
where keeping a Scarab Guard in play is also a scary proposition. So, just gonna Fury and Beacon Bolt here. Scarab Guard will go back to the opponent's hand, but they also take six in the meantime. Could potentially consider playing some cards to give our zombie token haste to potentially one hit KO the opponent out of nowhere. Maybe a maximize velocity comes to mind. So that's definitely something worth considering in this deck. Since we can always discard it early to chart a course and cathartic reunion and then jumpstart it out of the graveyard. So we're kind of attacking the opponent on two different angles. We've got a flying recursive threat and then the massive ground creature that, you know, can be answered pretty easily, but if they don't have the answer at the ready, it's just going to kill them in one attack. Cycles Fetid Pools, maybe looking for a sweeper here. And yeah, if they just replay Scarab God, they're dead to Royal Eruption plus an attack. And our opponent concedes before we even had to show them invade the city. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not the most exciting hand, since we're lacking interaction, but I can reunion discarding both copies of Sea the Truth, hit my land drops, and then set up my Invade the City into maybe a Collected Conjuring. So I'll try it. But a very fast deck might be able to sneak underneath us. Turn one Breeding Pool. And a Hinterland Harbor into Paradise Druid. So this might be the Teamer Seagate Stormcaller combo deck, which could already kill us next turn, but not much I can do about it. We're just gonna Cathartic Reunion discarding both copies of Seed of Truth, keep Pillar as a, maybe an answer to Paradise Druid. So gotta make sure to play our Spire Bluff Canal next turn, and then I can Maybe Charter Course Pillar, or just Invade the City. Uh -huh, it's a Mutate deck instead. So they're gonna mutate onto a Hexproof creature, that's their game plan. And yeah, Blue-Green Mutate deck probably indicates that they have the Shark in their deck, which can bounce our Zombie token, so that's gonna be problematic. I guess we'll still Invade the City, just to get the Zombie token in place, so maybe Conjuring can build onto it to make it even larger. And then hold chart of course until we maybe find an Arc Light Phoenix we can discard. So our opponent's got five mana plus a one mana discount on mutate. So we could see Starix already. It's gonna be Great Horn first. And a Parcel Beast. Alright, so no Shark yet, at least. Opponent stays back. And yeah, I think it's time for Conjuring. Ooh, we hit double Invade the City. So I could make one very large zombie if I wanted to. Yeah, maybe that's the play here, and hope they don't have a shark in hand. What's the alternative? One invade the city, charter course, discarding, pillar of flame perhaps, or a land. Now let's go big. Hit for 14. And if we pick up a crash through, we might be able to attack for lethal next turn. So Pouncing Shore Shark is what we don't want to see. And we see it. That's rough. So our zombie's gone. Still have one Invade the City somewhere in our deck. But now we'll have to close out the game with Arclight Phoenix, which we haven't found yet. But our opponent's at 6, so we could also close out the game with Burn Spells. So step one, 
probably chart a course before cathartic. And there's a royal eruption, so if we just get to seven mana, I can kick this and then pillar can also finish them off. So probably discard like a Warlord's Fury here. And then Cathartic could discard land crash through. And see what else we pick up. Alright, that's a lot of burn spells, so I guess we can just go face next turn and kill them. Don't think they have any life gain spells in the deck. So I can just double Royal Eruption next turn. Chances of them killing me are pretty slim. So we'll just Fury for now. Alright. Well, they had the Shark, but we still got them low enough where a burn spell could do it. It's gonna be a growth spiral. Their best chance is like a auspicious Sterix mutated, finding something like a crater hoof behemoth to kill me out of nowhere. But it's just gonna be a great horn. They might also be playing with a new mutate creature from the latest anthology expansion, which can destroy our lands. But we only need four for double royal eruption. So we're at 18, and a Skewed Swarm is not going to matter here. Three to the face. And three to the face. Alright, sweet. So yeah, overall, had a lot of fun playing this Crash City deck featuring Collected Conjuring. The card's definitely not too far from Collected Company in terms of power level. It does suffer a little bit from being a sorcery, but we would probably want to main phase it more often than not, just to be able to get back Arclight Phoenix from the graveyard. So it's not hurt too much by being a sorcery, although I guess hitting instants instead of just sorceries would make it even better. But yeah, overall, pretty fun deck and definitely something unique to do in Historic. So if you're a fan of blue-red spells and Arclight Phoenix, this might be the deck for you. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.